Is it you almost forgot? Let's go look at this pipe pro check. Yeah. Got 400 dang stainless kit. Everything. That thing's pretty flipping nice. If you're something out here, that's what you want now. Any more? That's what they're telling you you want. Well, I can say with 200. You guys don't need this. You just need to get yourself an old reliable 200. But it looks cool. So we literally just got kicked out of General Air for filming. Basically, Josh was following me around. We were getting bottles swapped out. No big deal, you know. And they like came over and like, hey, you need, you can't be filming in here. I said, dude, we got 14,000 people that want to know what we're doing, you know. And he's like, you can't be filming in here. You need to talk to the manager. And so it's just like, all right, fine, we're going to Buckeye. <laughs> <laughs> this is the nicest welding store I've ever been in. Yeah, they had everything. They even had engine drives sitting in the uh, in the shop. In the showroom. Mm -hmm. Brand new pipe grow sitting there. But whatever, not our deal. So this video is going on Jake's channel. Uh, when I got down here, I learned a lot of new terms as far as in the oil field. And I'd heard them on Jake's channel, but some of them I had to be like, whoa. Uh, let's slow down and uh, figure out what this means because I have no clue what you're saying. So this is going to be a pipeline slash oil field terminology list. And here we go. So some field terms. This is relating to in the field. We got roustabout. And I would call a roustabout um, a general labor hand that does the threading, the bolt up, and the rigging of the parts that the welders make. Would you call that a pretty good? Yeah, they're kind of a they're kind of a jack of all trades, jack of all trades. I think kind of everything but the welding. They're the ones that'll set the equipment. They're the ones that are going to come in and thread it, and basically plumb anything that is a threaded connection. Now, roustabouts even do groundwork, correct? Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. They they got their basically they're like civil guys where they're gonna come in, the rouse about to pour the concrete pads, they'll set the concrete pads. I mean, they're 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 super handy. And they're calling for like uh, the diggers hotline, they have to know where all the lines are, basically know <coughs> everything about the groundwork. Yep. And then we're dealing with- That's a good crew of roustabouts. Yeah, a good crew of roustabouts. Uh, some of them just do bolt up, correct? Yep. Yep. Um, our crew that Jake's been working with for the last year has been very versatile. They're freaking awesome. They are awesome. They get some stuff done. I mean, they know everything about everything except the welding. Yeah. And then we come in and do that. That's our job. Okay, so bolt up. When you say bolt up, what do you mean? Bolt up. So like the bolt up hands, the roustabouts, the bolt up hands, the mechanics, they're basically, their job is to, anytime there's a bolt connection, Flange. flanges to valves, valves to, you know, all this other stuff, <clears throat> they're going to come in, they need to know the spec rates mm -hmm. on what they're torquing to, uh, they need to know how to get this thing to where, because flanges and stuff will smile, it's called a smile, and uh, it just means that the flange is basically like this, which is no good, yeah, just, just like, like that. You know, it, it can't be twisted or, uh, you know, it has to be even, just like the binding on this. Yep, and then they're the ones that know what size gaskets need to go in. They're the ones that, you know, they know all of this stuff, and, and then they got their sheet of what their torque rates need to be, and just like a welder, where we put our stencil down on, say, hey, this is my weld, when you shoot it, this is mine, I claim this weld. They will write their stencils on the flanges saying, hey, I torqued this, this is mine. Mm -hmm. Good to go. So it's ownership. Yeah. So that's a bolt up hand. Well, okay, well, might as well pressure test or, um, or oh. hydrostatic test. Because oh. they, they put their stencil on it, so when they go to hydrostatic test, which means fill it with water or gas, correct? Um, to the max working pressure or above. Is that how they do it out yep, here? Yep, I think so. I'm and pretty sure. I'm not really too familiar about the hydro tests and, and all the tests. I just build it and, yeah. and I know my stuff don't leak. And, <laughs> and uh, 
a lot of times there's usually some kind of code for like boilers they usually want you like one and a half or two times working load on some of those so basically when they go to leak check it they want to know that our welds with our stencil Jake's signature on his weld that the company gives him his stencil yep. it's a number or initials uh, they go through and make sure the bolt up guys stencils on the flanges don't leak also I mean, yep. if there's a leak they take a squirt bottle and they'll run around and hit all these flange connections and if one's leaking they know who bolted it up and torqued it it's not a question on who did it no nope, it's written right there yep so the uh, superintendent or super so they'll shorten it to super that guy is like the boss man of the entire job because usually you have like a chain of command where it's like in most companies it's like employee foreman general foreman and then above the general foreman you usually have the super because you might have a lot of general foremans but you'll usually have one super and he basically dispatches the work for the general foreman or the general foreman in our world would be the weld boss yep in our in our end of it would be our weld boss mm -hmm. and then he basically <coughs> strings out the work says this is what the weld boss needs to get done then the weld boss goes to the welder and moves around the welders to what he needs to get done that the superintendent gave him. Um, the super will hire you, correct? The depends on what position you are coming in for. If you're the helper, your best luck is to talk to a welder. Yeah. Okay. Which he will then go talk to the super and, and get you hired on. The super will be the final say. Yep. Okay. He's going to be the one that says, "Hey, man, I need four more welders on this job." You need to get me some guys, you know? And so then, then it gets dispersed out to us and you better be flipping quick because four spots fill up faster. <laughs> faster than you could probably pour coffee. Yep. Um, and it goes, so it goes superintendent, it goes uh, straw boss, or not straw boss, um, weld boss. Yep. And On then, our job it goes this way. Yep, and then it goes welder and then helper. Yep. You are the bottom of the food chain. But you're still important. <laughs> but you're still important. Because we love you. <laughs> okay, uh, working, when someone says contract, uh, that means you're working contract. Because there's contract and then opposing to contract is split check. And contract means you're there as a subcontractor. Um, yep. And Jake's explained this, I think, in his uh, school video where he's at the college. Yep. Really in depth about how contract and split check works. Basically, contract, you take out your taxes, you get one lump sum, you provide everything. Split check, you get your your arm pay, which means your pay for your welding. Then your rig pay, which is like, hey, right. you brought a truck, your overhead expenses. Yep, your rental. Your Basically, rental. they rent your truck from you. Uh huh. And then you get your per diem, typically, um, which would be just covering your living expenses in the area. Yep. Um, and you would say with your tax write offs, it's pretty much a wash between the two of them. Yeah, it's just, you know, depending on, I mean, if you got brand new equipment and you already got everything, then, you know, contract is a little it's a little it's a little different because you've got to be buying things you've got to be basically reinvesting money into your company which is Schofield welding for us right now mm -hmm. and that is your write-off that is how you keep your taxes low yeah okay you guys have got to start reading tax codes and learning about the tax system and all this because it's it's extremely important to know where your money is going and in the oil field, you'll also hear NDT, which is NDT, which means non-destructive testing, which that refers to like x-ray or dye pen or um, ultrasound, UTing. That is basically testing the weld without destroying it, which if you're welding, you should pretty much know that. In your test day, they will usually do a bend test. Well, they have to cut a piece out of your pipe to bend it to make sure it's sound, good weld. So NDT comes in and x-rays everything in the ground maybe, and then maybe a certain percentage or everything above ground. So NDT, non-destructive testing, that's your, your, um, that's your quality of oil. Yeah, your quality control. You have your quality control, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Okay, and then on our job, we have a weld mapper, 
and the weld mapper does what? He he's the one that's drawn like on our particular job he's the one drawing up the ISO after we built it and then he's got these little bubbles that come off and say hey Jake welded this whole line except maybe Dave welded this one you know and so he's mapping who did all these welds what welds have been shot what welds have not been shot I know a lot of you guys have seen in our videos and pictures the red flags Okay, they are not repairs. Like, I, I don't know why they use red flags on this job, but they do. This job is a 15% shoot. Now, this is my first job ever that I've ever had a percentage shot. It's always been 100%, no matter what. But this job's 15%, so they mark with red flags where these guys are gonna come in and shoot. Well, that's the weld mapper's job. He needs to make sure that uh, <coughs> his welders have the correct percentage of shots on them. Uh, he he's basically a weld counter he's the one making sure that you're producing and then he's the one drawing up your ISO and mapping it so that if anything ever happened to this facility he says man and he's got a book by the end of it that's this thick I mean it's nine inches thick maybe a few books and uh, anything goes wrong in this facility they go back to that book and that weld blew out and they're like Yep, so-and-so did that well, get a hold of it. Yeah, and every piece of pipe, every flange, just like any car part, it has a serial number. And that serial number in pipe has what's called a heat number. And that heat number, you have to own the heat number. Yep, like, that's his job too. There is a piece of paper, say in the boiler world, there's a piece of paper that matches a pre-cut piece of tubing that has a number on the piece of paper, and then it has a matching number on the piece of tube or pipe, and if they don't own that, the insurance company doesn't want them to use it. Because that heat number corresponds to when they made that at the steel mill, they sent a sample of that pipe or tube to a lab, they told them exactly what was in it to the percentage, like 0.05% carbon or whatever is in there, chromium, and that tells then the person in the charge of the job that they need to use this filler metal, that it'll work out. It's basically like your your disclaimer for the engineer, being like, okay, I bought the right stuff. You know? and, and if anything ever happened to that piece of pipe, say it split out, it was in a production line, and they could go through and say, hey, man, this, this same production got shipped here, here, and here, we need to get a hold of these guys, you know? It's basically a recall system mm -hmm. to where if this piece of pipe blew out, man, what's the heat number on it? Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. we're getting a hold of these guys. Yeah, heat numbers and then the flange number <coughs> are yep. very important. It's like owning a receipt for the pipe, yep. um, which the insurance company wants to have. Yes, they do. Um, blackballed. Oh, man. That's, <laughs> when you get blackballed, it's bad, guys. You don't want to get blackballed. Um, you want to be the top of your game. Okay? All the time. You want to be number one in what you do. If you get blackballed, blackballed means that you are no longer allowed to, and it might only be for a certain amount of years, but it could be lifetime ban from this company. Permanently removed, never to work again. Good, good point. Never yeah. to be hired ever again. <coughs> uh, do not do that. Yeah. <laughs> work your butt off. Make sure that you just take care of your name because it's everything out here. It really is. And I haven't been a part of the oil field very long, only a couple months, but I've already heard that your reputation, your reputation hangs with you a lot more than it has in past years now. Yeah, anymore now, man. You guys go to just starting to drag up on jobs and just being a hard ass and being somebody that nobody wants to work with, your reputation will follow you and eventually you will either have to leave the state or, I mean, leave the country, depending on just how big a pain in the butt you are. Yeah, you'll run out of people to work for. Make more enemies than friends. Yep. Uh, okay, we got two more left in field terms. We got papers. Papers in welding is meant as welding papers, um, which means you're certified. Like, if you say I have Anadarko papers, it means what? I can work for Anadarko for a certain period of time until I have to recall. Right. Um, 
And then with the papers, there's a weld procedure, and the weld procedure says what you can and can't do. Maybe you have to run uphill, maybe you have to run downhill. Depending on the heat number that the engineer looked at, then you would have to run a different filler metal, maybe a different preheat, a post-heat, all that other stuff. The weld procedure is like the master plan for the welding plan. Like, this is what you're gonna do. And the paper that the welder, you don't actually physically own a paper, um, but on a computer system, it says you're qualified. Certain companies will give you a set of papers. So like Noble, the company we work for now, I have a card that stays in my wallet every day. Mm -hmm. it, te it says, hey, like if I have somebody come out and says, I want to see your search, mm -hmm. I pull that card out, I hand it to them, it says, Jake Schofield is certified by Noble. With this test, this qualification, this is what he can weld up to. Yep. Something like that. When I started well, the Mone, like they gave me a binder, and in my binder I had my papers with yep. my procedure. And the last one is drag up, which means leave a job, but not with giving a notice. Usually. Drag up, I mean, yeah, usually it's usually, uh, I mean, I don't know, there's a lot of ways to drag up, I guess. Dragging up basically just means you are quitting, okay? Now, runoff means you got run off, meaning you got fired, okay? We got run off, yep. you know? Uh, dragging up means you quit personally, like yourself quit, you know? Yep. You, you moved on to something bigger or better, or you had different plans going on, and you yep. just drug your stuff up, throw it on the truck, and leave. Yep. All right, you guys, this is, how, how many parts are we going to do in this, you think? That was... Part one? Part one, and there will be about three to four parts in this. Okay, so we got lots of terms. We're always trying to come up with new terms to try to help you guys. We don't want you coming out here thinking you're speaking, you know, French or whatever, you know. You, we want you guys to understand when somebody says something, you know what they're talking about. Yeah, and I went through this list with my wife on the phone just for fun, <laughs> and we got to a bell hole, and she's like, that sounds like a, a swear word. Like, you call somebody a bell hole. So, <laughs> that was pretty funny. So that's our new thing now. Man, you're such a bell hole. Such a bell hole. Oh, you're such a bell hole. But anyways, you guys, hopefully this this part one of the of the terminology helped you guys out a little bit everybody be blessed thank Josh for this because he's the one that came up with the idea of hey man when I got out here I didn't know what this this and this mean we need yeah. to do a video on it so anyways thanks to him you guys be blessed and we'll talk to you later see, see you guys